I want to rock. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 heavy metal anthems. No one's going to lose. The gambling's for fools. But that's the way I like it, baby. I don't want to live forever. For this list, we'll be ranking the most enduring and anthemic tracks in the genre. Do any of these songs make you want to raise your fist and yell? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Warriors of the World United. Man of War. It could be argued that the entire discography of New York's Man of War consists of stone-cold heavy metal anthems. While Warriors of the World United may have showed up a bit later in the band's discography, it still stands as one of their most powerful works. We own the right to live the fight. We're here for all of you. The song hangs upon a sturdy mid-paced riff and Joey DeMaio's driving bass. Thanks to this combination, we get fist-pumping aggression before the chorus hits with grandeur and magic. Raise your hands into the air, we warriors! Vocalist Eric Adams proves he's one of the genre's best by delivering emotional pathos and high-octane power with ease. That's wonderfully showcased in the song's surprisingly tender bridge section. And all who stand in my way will die. In the end, Warriors of the World United brings it all back for a rousing third act. We're warriors. Number 19. Rock You Like a Hurricane. Scorpions. Germany's Scorpions possess a long and prestigious musical history that dates all the way back to the 1970s. The band's progressive and kraut rock roots were long gone by the time Rock You Like a Hurricane swept the globe back in 1984. At this point, the Scorpions were primed for the international heavy metal market and equally at home performing arena packing rockers and tender emotional ballads. Here I am. Rock you like a hurricane. Rock you like a hurricane sits proudly in the former camp. This crowd pleaser manages to be both commercial and creatively satisfying to Scorpions' hard rock and pedigree. This is crossover Eurometal that's slick yet in control. It's a muscular anthem to rocking, rolling, and all that good stuff in between. Here I am, rock you like a hurricane. I love it. Number 18, Cowboys from Hell, Pantera. It's impossible to overstate the importance of Pantera when it comes to the landscape of 1990s heavy metal. The band's hair metal roots were all but abandoned here in favor of a power groove attack that, quite frankly, changed the game. Cowboys from Hell served as a call to arms. It was a musical statement of intent that influenced legions of artists in its wake. Guitarist Dimebag Daryl's tone was crunchy, his riffs were catchy, and his flair felt undeniable. Meanwhile, frontman Phil Anselmo took his classic vocal influences from icons like Rob Halford. He melded those sensibilities with his own talent and created an intensely visceral performance all his own. It's hardcore and high-octane post-thrash for a new generation of metalheads. Number 17. Raining Blood. Slayer. The world of thrash metal was not ready for Slayer's Reign in Blood when it was released back in 1996. Nor was it ready for that album's relentless closing track, Raining Blood. This was beyond thrash and beyond speed metal. This was something different. A 
take no prisoners assault that pulled no punches. Raining Blood was a heavy metal anthem for legions of 80s headbangers. The serenity of falling rain belies just how much Raining Blood goes for the throat as its dark opening riff takes hold. Then there's that bruising breakdown that hits just after the two minute mark. Some may say it's the sound of all hell breaking loose. Well, if all that's true, then we say that hell ain't that bad a place to be. Number 16. Round and Round. Rat. The 1980s hair metal boom was a fertile period for commercially successful metal bands to craft some of the most enduring genre anthems of all time. Out on the streets, that's where we meet. Round and Round is definitely one of these tunes. While this absolute rock radio staple was marketed as a single, it possessed just as much bite as any of Rat's killer album cuts. Round and round, what comes around goes around. This is thanks largely to the guitar work of Robin Crosby and Warren Demartini. Their tandem offense made Round and Round feel simultaneously heavy, anthemic, and melodic. Additionally, the dual harmony section at about 240 in the song never fails to give us goosebumps each and every time. Number 15, Live Wire, Motley Crue. While fans can debate whether Livewire serves as Motley Crue's heaviest moment, it's unquestionably one of the band's best. This is a fast, aggressive, and anthemic cut that's equal parts heavy metal thunder and glam rock bombast. The crew feel hungry and dangerous on Livewire. It's a song that presented a band living on the edge where tomorrow wasn't promised and indulgence was key. While Tommy Lee's drumming feels breakneck on Livewire, Mick Mars' main riff slices through it all like a stiletto. Meanwhile, Vince Neil proves that he, quite simply, was the voice of Motley Crue. He delivers a performance that's all guts, glory, and bravado. Well, be mine too now. Number 14, The Final Countdown, Europe. Europe was a band primed from the world of traditional hard rock and heavy metal, boasting influences from artists like Thin Lizzy and Deep Purple. The Final Countdown, however, was the anthem to end all anthems. This keyboard-laden 1980s jam knew exactly what it was doing. The final countdown was arena-friendly and proud of it. Although Mick McKaylee's keyboards do a lot of heavy lifting here, there's also a killer guitar solo from John Norum. And we can't forget about the indescribably smooth vocal charm of frontman slash dreamboat Joey Tempest. The final countdown still continues to resonate with audiences today. Whenever you go to a sporting event, it's almost a guarantee that this track will get the fans pumped up. It's the final countdown. Number 13, I Wanna Be Somebody, Wasp. Frontman Blackie Lawless and crew were just as much influenced by the shock rock of Alice Cooper as they were by contemporary heaviness. When they combined the best parts of both worlds, the music of Wasp began to feel a bit more varied. This compact and anthemic rocker from 84 really demonstrates their talents. I Want to Be Somebody is simple and to the point. Wasp was here, and they weren't going to play nice. The guitars of Chris Holmes and Randy Piper are nasty and gnarled up, which was a far cry from the often slick sound of the Sunset Strip. <music> Meanwhile,
while Lawless's vocals sound like they can peel paint, his voice rings perverse charisma all his own. Number 12, We're Not Gonna Take It, Twisted Sister. It seems incredible to think that the Parents Music Resource Center felt legitimately threatened by the music of Twisted Sister. After all, when you watch the video for We're Not Gonna Take It, it almost feels like you tuned into a live-action Looney Tunes cartoon. It seems unfair that this empowering anthem ever got flack. We're Not Gonna Take It feels like it delicately balances 1970s glam and metal sound. In fact, that's partially why the song works so well. Dee Snider's taunting vocals and the song's simplistic arrangement makes it easy for anyone to sing along. Each and every time we hear the opening notes to We're Not Gonna Take It, we know we're about to be thoroughly rocked. We're not gonna take it Number 11, Peace Sells, Megadeth. Thrash metal in the 1980s was a place where many bands felt comfortable writing songs that could convey their social and political beliefs. Megadeth's Dave Mustaine certainly didn't shy away from this approach for Peace Sells. Full of quirky and memorable turns of phrase, this track feels just as vital lyrically as it does musically. And the opening bass line was so iconic that it became a part of MTV's music news segment for years. Although Peace Sells never moves at a million miles an hour, it didn't have to. All it had to do was prove that thrash could progress and evolve just like any other branch from the heavy metal tree. Number 10. All We Are. Warlock. The often testosterone-fueled world of heavy metal wasn't a place bereft of iconic and respected women. Doro Pesch was a trailblazer back in the 1980s with the German metal band Warlock. Near the end of the decade, the group gave us their biggest and most defining hit, All We Are. This anthem of perseverance and empowerment served as a calling card for Doro, whose vocals absolutely steal the show. All We Are pounds the pavement with its crunching main riff. However, it's truly Pesh's immeasurable charisma and insanely powerful voice that made this track impossible to skip. Number 9. Metal Health. Bang Your Head. Quiet Riot. Someone had to kick down the doors. Quiet Riot's Metal Health LP was the first album from the genre to top the Billboard charts, thanks largely to the success of singles like this title track. Metal Health possesses an arrangement that feels similar to Def Leppard's Let It Go, while simultaneously refreshing that template for a metal-hungry American audience. The song's main riff feels ready to play with an instantly memorable melody. At the same time, lead singer Kevin Dubrow's screeching vocals are perfect. And the breakdown near the end is the perfect way to pump things up for Metal Health's final and triumphant charge towards heavy metal glory. Bang your heads, indeed. Number 8. We Rock. Dio. There's no denying that Dio's Rainbow in the Dark is a certified heavy metal anthem. 
However, We Rock is simply too powerful to ignore. You wash the faces. You see the prices of the things they want to be. Ronnie James Dio was one of the defining voices of heavy metal who was able to make utter magic with his hard-earned talent. We Rock! We Rock feels more streamlined than Dio's earlier work with either Rainbow or Black Sabbath because it captures an almost speed metal level of intensity. This is thanks to the blazing axemanship of future Def Leppard guitarist Vivian Campbell. All the while, Dio soars above it all like a true and utter heavy metal god. We Rock! We're Number 7. Youth Gone Wild – Skid Row Youth Gone Wild was one of those lightning-in-a-bottle songs. It's an anthem that meant so much to those who were young or young at heart during heavy metal's heyday. This was a song that spoke to a generation for whom heavy metal and hard rock was a religious experience. As a result, Skid Row's Sebastian Bach feels like a rock and roll preacher. He comes off as a six foot three badass with lungs capable of carrying the toughest of tunes. Youth Gone Wild leaves plenty of room for Bach to show others how it's done with a most excellent and career-defining performance. The, the actual arrangements of Youth Gone Wild aren't too shabby either. A Loctite set of riffs service the song in a punchy and brilliant way. Number 6 Enter Sandman, Metallica. Although it's debatable whether Enter Sandman is Metallica's best song, it's definitely an internationally known 90s heavy metal anthem that ushered in a harder sound to the mainstream. This, as well as the entire self-titled Metallica album, streamlined the band for a new generation. Gone were the intricate and progressive arrangements of old. In their place was a more song-focused approach. During Enter Sandman, there's absolutely no fat wasted. The main riff alone is immense. This is a metal song designed to fill arenas and ruin car stereos. While detractors may have argued that Metallica's thrash was in the past, this mattered little to millions of fans. Enter Sandman was a gateway song for many to get into the genre. Number 5 Ace of Spades, Motorhead. Motorhead is another band that is so classic and iconic that it feels so difficult to just pick just one song. So we're going to take a second to acknowledge that Hellraiser is absolutely badass. However, it's also undeniable that the band's most well-known anthem just has to be Ace of Spades. It's a song that's honestly gone on to enjoy a life of its own outside of Motorhead. Ace of Spades' overblown bass intro and Devil May Care attitude just feels mainlined into heavy metal's bloodstream at this point. The Ace of Spades! However, we also admit that it's fun to imagine how many minds were blown the first time they heard it. Lemmy, Fast Eddie Clark, and Phil Filthy Animal Taylor deserve a lot of credit for crushing this one. Number 4. Crazy Train, Ozzy Osbourne. Crazy Train is another case where an artist's best and best-known song may not be one and the same. Oh, 
While Ozzy Osbourne has been at the helm of so many Stone Cold Metal classics, it just might be Crazy Train that's presented first on the man's resume. There's an immediacy to that iconic thumping bass line that's instantly recognizable. Once, it's followed by Osborne's equally iconic wail and the screaming guitar of Randy Rhodes, we're off to the races. Crazy Train isn't cut from the same doom and gloom cloth of Ozzy's previous band, Black Sabbath. The song has a catchiness that's impossible to deny. Meanwhile, the aforementioned and much-missed Rhodes lets it rip with one of his most defining and melodic solos. It's basically heavy metal 101. Number 3. Painkiller – Judas Priest Judas Priest were already elder statesmen of heavy metal when they released their 12th LP, Painkiller, in 1990. As a result, the album turned out some of the band's heaviest material in years, an artistic statement that felt like it was stepping up to its younger contemporaries. The title track certainly felt this way. Painkiller rips out of the starting gate with an accompanied drum solo that said, in no uncertain terms, Priest was back. The guitars of K.K. Downing and Glenn Tipton respond in kind. <laughs> Meanwhile, vocal legend Rob Halford lets loose with a harrowing scream of madness. Painkiller was Judas Priest at a boiling point, a sharpened steel spike into the heart of anyone who felt they couldn't compete at an elite level. Number 2. The Number of the Beast – Iron Maiden You can sense it right from the beginning. Right from Bruce Dickinson's throat-ripping wail of anguish, this is something special. Iron Maiden had a couple of important albums prior to Dickinson joining for 1982's The Number of the Beast. But this track has gone on not only to help put Iron Maiden on the Mount Rushmore of heavy metal, but it also helped define the genre as a whole. There's an intelligence and wit to Maiden's riff wizardry and arcane lyrical references that sets them apart. Sex, sex, sex. The the Meanwhile, the actual composition of The Number of the Beast is a lean, mean, and primal example of heavy metal with a capital H and a capital M. It's the sort of song upon which entire careers are based. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. War Pigs – Black Sabbath It all had to start somewhere. Some point to Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple as embryonic entry points for heavy metal to be dragged kicking and screaming into the world. Oh, However, it's Black Sabbath where the sound and vision of what was to come truly takes hold and is birthed in earnest. The title track to Sabbath's 1970 debut, All Doom and Gloom, certainly sounds this clarion call. Find out I'm the chosen one. War Pigs, however, takes that doomy sound and filters it into something different. This is a jam that's dark, heavy, and brooding, but it's also fully sing alongable. Ozzy's wail. 
Bill Ward's jazzy drumming, Geezer Butler's blasting bass, and Tommy Iommi's riff sorcery are all on display. <laughs> Their talents combine to make inimitable magic that we're still talking about today. Oh, Lord, yeah. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.